Hey everyone, it's Sonia here. I just want to give you a little update. Things sure are moving fast these days. Actually, I'm going to be going to Ottawa tomorrow, hopefully, so then I can give you uh, some updates from uh, on the on the scene. So, a couple things. Uh, what happened with the GoFundMe? And uh, two, ooh, a violent incident at one of the protests, but not by one of the protesters. Also, some of you had asked me uh, what I thought of the whole Romana Didulo situation, so I'll give you my comments on that. Before I start, I just want to say thanks for liking the video. Thank you for your support on Patreon that keeps my channel going. Also, if you haven't stocked up on food, I mean, it's kind of late, but it's not too late. If you're interested in getting some MREs, I'm going to leave you a link below for uh, preparewithtruthergirls.com, which is my link for my Patriot supply. And you can get a $50 discount on a four-week supply of MREs that are specially prepared to last 25 years, so they're ready when you need them. So if you're interested, please check out the link below. For more info and a discount. So what I wanted to talk about was what happened with the GoFundMe and some of the stuff that happened behind the scenes. So as you may have heard, uh, yeah, the trucker convoy uh, fundraiser was removed from GoFundMe. So it said here, according to the February 4th statement, GoFundMe determined the Freedom Convoy 2022 fundraiser violated its terms of service, which prohibits the promotion of violence and harassment. Hmm. A day earlier, the House of Commons Public Safety and National Security Committee called on the online fundraising platform to testify on how it would ensure funds weren't being used to promote extremism and hate. They're really pushing that whole line about it being extremists, which is crazy considering even recent uh, surveys by these large survey companies have found that something like 59%, 60% of Canadians are in favor of abolishing the mandates and restrictions. So I, I don't, I don't see how they call these extremists or a small minority. Um, I told you in my other video that I thought these people with these offensive flags, I thought they were probably plants. Everyone that I know who went there said that they saw no such thing. And somehow the media got it on camera. Just so happens just so happens that the media was there when it happened and then the rest of the time it doesn't happen i mean have you heard of any more of these nazi flags or whatever else it was confederate flags people walking around in clan hoods has it has it happened since then no it was just like in the first day oh we got it on camera oh my god look it's the extremists it's the white supremacists and then where did they go after that there's no more white supremacists up there all it took was one or two and then that's the rhetoric uh, for the rest of the time. And um, here's something interesting that went on behind the scenes, in case you didn't hear. So word got out that the, the fundraiser had said, you have to apply for a refund by February 19th, or they're going to take your money and donate it to, I guess, whatever they want to donate it to. So people didn't like that, obviously. So um, word got out that uh, bef they said, before you fill out a GoFundMe form to get your money back, call your credit card company and ask for dispute a charge and give the reason as money is not being used as intended. It is a super easy process and refund immediately. I just did it and it worked. This will hurt GoFundMe more than just a simple refund by GoFundMe. The reason it would hurt them is that they would get charged $29. So you can imagine if everybody did that, how much GoFundMe would get charged. So GoFundMe's response to this was the update we issued earlier enabled all donors to get a refund and outlined a plan to distribute remaining funds to verify charities selected by the Freedom Convoy organizers. However, due to donor feedback, we are simplifying the process. We will automatically refund all contributions directly Donors do not need to submit a request. You can expect to see your refund within seven to 10 business dates. So I think that has a lot to do with the fact that people were going to um, ask for a dispute, a charge, and GoFundMe was going to end up having to pay a lot of money. Uh, but not to worry if you're supporting the, uh, the convoy, they, they still are getting funding. Good news. Uh, Trucker Convoy finds alternative funding platform. They have moved to Give, Send, Go, which builds itself as the number one free Christian fundraising site. And they're doing very well on Give, Send, Go. 
uh, within a day, they've raised over a million dollars. So everyone's going to get refunded from GoFundMe and they're all just going to send it to Give, Send, Go. Now here's something I thought you might be interested in. The Governor General has been overwhelmed by demands to remove Trudeau from office. So people have been calling into the Governor General's office. Usually it's 25 to 50 people a day, but it's gone as high as 4,600 at one point in the afternoon on Thursday. But I think you would be interested to know how this actually works and why, I mean, it, it is a kind of protest, but it, it probably won't solve the problem. So the thing is that, according to Danielle Bailon, director of McGill Institute for the Study of Canada, um, it's, it's kind of pointless because the governor general doesn't have the authority to remove Justin Trudeau. And, and I know that this is true. The only way Justin Trudeau can be removed is if a vote of no confidence is passed in the legislature. Uh, that the legislature disapproves and no longer consents to the governing prime minister and the incumbent cabinet. A vote of no confidence that passes leads to the fall of the incumbent government. So, I mean, I guess you can still call the governor general if you want, but uh, she won't actually be able to fix this problem. If a vote of no confidence passes, the prime minister is required to submit his or her resignation to the governor general of Canada, who may either invite the leader of another party or coalition to attempt to form a new government in the House of Commons or dissolve parliament and call a general election. The problem with this is that it's pretty much impossible that this is going to happen because the liberals have a lot of seats. And then on top of that, the NDP, they're just exactly on the same page as the liberals. So it's, it's like the two together. I mean... You have a lot of people with the same mindset in Parliament uh, between the Liberals, the NDP, and I think even the Bloc Québécois. I think the only people who would want to have a vote of no confidence would be the Conservatives, but there's not enough of them to get that to happen. You'd have to get all the legislature to, to, to act together, and they're not going to do it. It happened with Harper, though, but it's not going to happen with Trudeau. Um, this is something that happened in Winnipeg. A crazed masked driver plowed into peaceful demonstrators last night in Winnipeg. Um, a 42-year-old man was charged with assault with a weapon, dangerous driving, and failing to remain after Winnipeg police allege he drove his Jeep through a group of Freedom Convoy protesters at the Manitoba legislature grounds, injuring four men. So you see this protester here in this car? I mean, sorry, not protester. You see the driver in this car? Notice he's wearing a mask in his car. Uh, there's only a certain kind of person that wears a mask in their car. And it's definitely not one of the people participating in the convoy. Male from Headingley, Manitoba faces charges of assault with a weapon times four, dangerous operation of a conveyance caused bodily harm times two, dangerous operation of a conveyance, failed to stop after accident knowing that reckless, knowing that the driving was reckless times two, and failed to stop at the scene of an accident times two. And he is currently in custody. We haven't named the uh, individual yet because charges haven't been formally sworn to and we are obligated to not release a name until that process is complete. Um, I guess I'll take questions. So Rebel News brings up an interesting point here. Trudeau called for Canadians to marginalize the unvaccinated. He said they should not be tolerated. He said they were racist, misogynist, violent. Someone heard that, believed it, and was radicalized and committed this act of terrorist violence. Uh, yeah, I remember when uh, Trudeau said that. The clip is here on uh, True North. We might as well just listen to it while we're at it. We on va s'en sortir de cette pandémie par la vaccination. Puis on sait, on en connaît tous des gens qui sont en train d'hésiter un petit peu. On va continuer d'essayer de les convaincre. Mais il y a aussi des gens qui sont farouchement opposés à la vaccination. Qui sont extrémistes. Qui croient pas dans la science, qui sont souvent misogynes, qui souvent racistes aussi. C'est un, 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 un petit groupe, mais qui prend de la place. Et là, il faut faire un choix en tant que leader, en tant que pays. Est-ce qu'on... Est-ce qu'on tolère ces gens-là ou est-ce qu'on dit, ben voyons, la plupart des gens, presque 80% des Québécois, ont fait ce qu'il fallait faire, se sont fait vacciner, on veut revenir à, 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 aux choses qu'on aime faire, eh, c'est pas ces gens-là qui vont nous bloquer maintenant. So, it's kind of ironic that the um, 
truck convoy fundraiser was removed from GoFundMe because of issues that the funds could be used to promote extremism and hate. When uh, Justin Trudeau is promoting extremism and hate and all of Canada's taxpayers are funding that. It doesn't make any sense. But Justin Trudeau does seem to be promoting hate, hatred of the unvaccinated. The public is funding him. And um, now actually someone has acted on this. I mean, who, who put it in their head that these people deserve to be run over by a car? I think the media did. And whose narrative is the media pushing? I think it's Justin Trudeau's. I think it's the government's. Don't forget, in the other video, he said that they paid them $600 billion so they would have a liberal bias. So his, his words are, uh, at this point, literally fueling uh, hate, harassment, extremism, violence. So will there be legal consequences for Justin Trudeau? Hmm. That'll be interesting to see how that turns out. So there was one last thing. Somebody asked me what I think of this. This came up on Twitter. Romana Didulo, the QAnon queen of Canada, just burned a Canadian flag with a lighter in front of her followers on Parliament Hill. Well, this is a real person that we can identify. Um, really burning a flag on camera. Everybody, know who's, everybody knows who she is. And she's called the QAnon queen. I'm just going to tell you, first of all, I always thought QAnon was a COINTEL PSYOP. I've always believed that, which is why I never talked about it, never made videos about what they talk about, because I always thought it was bullshit. I'll leave you the link to a video that I did about QAnon and how it functions as COINTEL. So this woman, I, I don't know why anyone would follow her. I, I went to check out her... Um, uh, well, there's just two little problems with that. Because you see, in Canada, the head of state, commander-in-chief, queen of Canada, and head of the government, all in one person, doesn't get voted in. My name as queen of Canada you will never see on the ballot. Okay, she thinks that she's the Queen of Canada and the head of state and she's the whole government. I mean, uh, I heard that she lives in a, um, a rooming house in BC or she has some kind of problems. And I, I, I'd like to have compassion on her because it, it seems to me like she really has some kind of an illness. Um, but I don't understand why anyone would be following her. So look, that, that's it. I mean, I just want to give you a little wrap up about what's happened with the fundraiser and this, this new uh, situation with somebody actually like committing a real act of violence and it, and it wasn't somebody from the convoy. And uh, I feel like, uh, yes, uh, it's kind of really obvious that our leaders have been fueling this kind of division, this kind of hatred and, and actually these kind of extreme extremist actions. So who's the extremist here? Who's spreading hate? Yeah, I think we know who it is. Um, and that's it. I, I might be going to Ottawa, like I said. I'll let you know how that goes. And, uh, well, thanks for joining me in the chat. And thanks again for your support on Patreon. And check out the link, please, for the um, the MREs. So you get a discount below with uh, preparewithtruthergirls.com. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.